Representative, I will call the meeting to order. It is now. Okay, good. Very happy. All right. It is um, uh, Monday, June 3rd, 2019, is the Motown Select Board. If you're missing um, Callie tonight, I think she had an emergency at work. Um, so let's get right to um, the agenda. We have general public comment. Um, let's see. <laughs> Jane, why don't you go ahead? Okay, so um, we have an opening on the trustees, um, library trustees board, yes. because Michelle resigned shortly after she was elected. Yes. And so this is Emily Wood. I will let her tell you more about herself, but um, she is interested in the position and we support her. So we're here to ask her, you to appoint her. Thank you. And, uh, Thanks for the Emily Wood, is that me? That's correct. Right, thanks. Thank you for coming and coming this evening, Emily. Why don't you uh, share a little bit about yourself and why you uh, want to jump into this? Sure. My name is Emily Wood. <laughs> I am I've been living in Wartown for about four years now, and um, my profession is a school librarian. So library is near and dear to my heart, right, right from my profession, right there. Um, why I would like to jump in is that. Well, I really, it's Moortown and the library put together, and I would really like to help support the library, uh, um, help its patrons. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, with Jeannie, somewhere on front page form, so, oh, Meg, was Meg, Meg Allison <laughs> was asking about yes. how many librarians we have in town. Because yes, I know Meg very well. Did you respond to that as? Well, I was with her with, when she you were doing that. that. So yeah. how many are there? Are there? There's a lot. <laughs> Librarians, librarians oh, that live yeah. in Wartown, yeah. yeah. Um, so we were um, together, her, Peter, Angela, and I were together, and um, so we were like, oh, we know all these other librarians that live in Wartown, so we even did a little research to see what other town could claim a lot of librarians. <laughs> I know another one that Meg didn't have this Oh, to. should let her know, because she wants to like take them on and be like, no, we we have the most librarians for <laughs> 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 On it, then. Yes. <laughs> um, gentlemen, or anyone have any questions? Not really? I was well, glad to see somebody uh, with your experience come on board and in a position that can help us. That's for So, tell us a little bit about your ideas for the library. Some ideas for the library? Um, I doesn't have any yet. No. <laughs> Not a ton. I just know that, I mean, as a school librarian, I'm very passionate about access for kids. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it, libraries, public libraries are kind of a great safe place for our community kids, so making sure that that is available for our residents. But I, mean, I know that it expands beyond that, that's just my, norm, my normal perspective on that. So if there's no other questions, uh, I'd move to support uh, Emily Wood for the trustee's position. I'll second that. John seconds. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Thank you. We're good. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank Right, so is there any other public comments? We, we must be um, Jeff or Jim? Jim. Jim. All, right, thanks. Jim. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, reports and communications. I had a call this afternoon from Adam Martens. He said that he's tried getting a hold of Matt and there's an issue with the driveway out on Middle Road and Gallagher Acres. Is that the one we've taken that pictures? <laughs> <clears throat> so he called again. I just let you guys know about that. This, uh, what was the, say it one more time what his name was? Adam Martens is the way he pronounced his last name. It's Martin with an S. <laughs> I can get that out. <laughs> I guess that's the way we're, when you're sophisticated, <laughs> Martin. <laughs> Martins. <laughs> Martins. <laughs> 
this just came in, I guess, um, from Steve Hill. Yeah. Yeah. So just before we move on, uh, I, think I will, I will uh, check with Martin on that. I know that we can't, well, last fall we talked about having that guardrail mm -hmm. removed. Right. And mm -hmm. I, I think I saw an email earlier this year, so let's make sure they get out there with the excavator, not excavator, but bucket loader, whatever it is. So I will call them on that. Just break that down. So I'm sorry, Sasha. So this came in from Steve McGill. Yeah, um, regarding the curb cut. All right. Um, yeah, a little bit of history. I think that the curb cut was approved as the night of the pre-town meeting. So I think, it, honestly, I didn't even remember doing it. Um, yeah, one of those ones that really went by pretty quick. <laughs> we we're in the middle of mm -hmm. trying to get our budget done. That's okay. So did anyone, um, what's the basis? What? Uh, basically, uh, the, the, where the curb cut is now is right across from like his bathroom of his house. So it, uh, he doesn't like the location. Um, and it, I think they're prone to move it in, in either direction. But somebody, you know, these obviously they've already spent some money there. The owners have spent some money putting the pipe in and putting their driveway in. Thinking they had the permit. And I don't know if Steve really expects them if we move now. I mean, it'd be, it'd be good if it could be moved, but. Yeah, I think this is where, um, and I haven't looked at statue on this, but I mean, it's something I think the board would be, I mean, I mean, what to do it, but. Would want to. Uh, has there been any um, feedback from the other landowner here at all? This just came about today, so I, I haven't been. You. Yeah, to I haven't you. talked to it. Uh, it's Graves. I think it's a new landowner. Mm -hmm. I have not talked to him. But... He was in this morning, Tom, when you were here. Um, Steve was mm -hmm. right. Yeah, but he didn't come in and yeah. address address me. So I'm just, but I know Cheryl had said to, to go ahead and send us an email on it. I, I don't mind taking the lead on this. I can right. certainly talk to Bob and, and see how they feel. Yeah, why don't you check that and do it as, as soon as you can in case yeah. there's any work being done that is costing money and see if, you know, otherwise I think everything that we've done, we, we, we did was fine. Yeah. So we'll just have to stay the way it is. Can you take a quick look at that? Yeah. Okay. And then Sherman needs a decision made on the capital and safety preserve. John, is this something that you guys? Yeah. It was it was talked about at I think the twentieth meeting, but it wasn't really decided on. I think they voted on. Uh -huh. Sherman just needed it in writing, I guess. Oh. Yeah, it was it was voted. Okay. Yeah, it was a motion. Just a technicality, I guess. So, um, and I think the I think it's fifteen months instead of nine now. All right. So, okay. um, uh, the recommend the treasurer would like to re recommend that we roll a current CD into the fifteen month CD special at Northfield Savings Bank. Um, at a rate of 1.98 percent. Did you say 1.98? No, it's something. It used. It was 1. Point something. I think so it's oh. current CD balance rate at 1.98. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Uh, 2.5. 2.47. I don't know what the difference is on that. Is this a new penalty CD? Can you tell from that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And maybe that's why, too, because well, the, recommend, it's not. Cause the recommendation, right, the recommendation from the committee was the nine month. Mm -hmm. So I and, and did vote on it, but. Yeah, because we're here in the back, all right. So nine months in the back. So, John, if you want to um, change your motion. Or yes, my motion at this point. Get, um, for the 15 months. Because it was yes, nine Right, months. right, okay. Yep. All right, so I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, take out the CD for a 15 month CD for the 500000 Northfield Savings Bank. Um, and uh, rate of 2.5. I make a motion to second. Just a second. Okay. Long day, right? Is there any further discussion on motion? Yes. Uh, Cheryl, did you say Cheryl was going to be in at 645? Yeah. So do we want to consider holding them off until Cheryl is here as to. I don't think there's anything up to it. I don't think so. The only difference is you guys. That I already voted on it is just from nine mm -hmm. to fifteen months. Mm -hmm. She's recommending it, so unless you have an objection to it, I do not. All right. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Let's go to the quarter of a percent more. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody. No, it's This one I know how it's going to go, but um, Roberta Garrett has a complaint about the whole and some damage that happened to her car. So was that? Um, my scraperers. This is uh, Roberta Garrett, mm -hmm. and there's a pothole on River Road. Um, she had her tire sliced. Anyways, um, sticking with our policy, we don't um, reimburse for, for damage. I believe it's been fixed, right? Yeah, I thought so. Anything else? And then just the communication from Elizabeth Burke about the budget. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm ready to tell the stuff we know the over budget on the printing. Um, this line item is typically used for printing flyers for a summer reading program, but we have run two ads to recruit applicants for the position. Um, the ads alone will exceed the $75 budget by about $5. We still plan to uh, print the summer flyers. So what we need to do is just try to, have that, you know, see she can't move around some of her items. But the budget's not at this point to that point anymore. Anything else? So, Cheryl, did you have anything back there? Katrina, as far as the minutes or anything, anything uh, that you want to add? Thank you, sir. Jason, you got anything? Yeah. Great. Uh, one little thing, I guess, or just a couple of things. Um, I had a phone call or voicemail late last night from my aunt Gloria complaining about the grading work on Jones Brook Road. Talked to Mark today, and apparently the grade had broken down on that road, and so they didn't couldn't complete the job like they normally do. And I just left a message for her. I don't know if there's any other word from anybody else on Jonesburg Road, but that's what happened over there. So, um, Mark, what happened to the grid? Um, we lost a um, feed from our alternator to our battery, so mm -hmm. we uh, were losing voltage to the system, and eventually the would not would not even move. Yeah, no, it, obviously the, it takes a amount of power to run everything. So we're able to get down there with our battery pack and get the wind row laid out, you know, so that it was passable, but we needed yeah. to. No, that's fine. I just, yeah, it's no more concern that all the money we put Yeah, it was a, a simple fix, but it was, you know, we did need to get the great back. Okay, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So. Thank you. Sorry, thank you, Rick. Yeah, but Martin and I also went over the window, window uh, road improvements, and he has written up a permit. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if he picked it up or not. Uh, I did not, did not see him at the end of the day. 
Yeah, so, so I think we're pretty much in agreement uh, with what needs to be done to satisfy the town and everything. Um, and I also went over with uh, Martin Neve putting out an RFP for the uh, bridge repair on the top road, uh, the scour repair. So we'll be getting that out. So I think we're good. Uh, I've got the initial notification for the <coughs> Conservancy that there actually will be another donated piece of land. More details to follow. It's not, not immediate. They haven't even mentioned where it was. But Who from the whole side? From the uh, River Conservancy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if people have noticed the sign had been down at the other spot, but it's it back up again. Looks like a new one. What's that? It looks like a new one. Yeah, it is a new one, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what happened to the other one. Maybe more permanent, maybe more. Yeah, that was that could be, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, we got a memo on that, John, that there was something wrong with it and it was fading, so they were going to put on another one, remember? Okay. They okay. added town and more town to it. Yeah. Um, unrelated to, to the Nature Conservancy, um, in this recently concluded budget, um, I think it was $500,000 was added to the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board's budget to buy land um, for things that have come up for conservation purposes. Mm -hmm. And since there are some parcels in Moortown, um, bringing that to their attention might be a good thing. What would be the best route to do that? Mm -hmm. I have to say, since that whole piece of the, there's there's a possible buyer, right? From, from what I understand. Um, so I think it's a, it's a little premature at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but I would I would contact Karen Horn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let her know. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else? John? No. Nope. Ranks. Um, I think Martin, while you're here, I just want to address. We had uh, Adam Martins on the other side of town. It was a guardrails that we're, we're going to take out at some point. Do you know when we can get to that? Uh, Doug Gallagher, it's been done. Oh, it has been done. I did receive a phone call from. I sounded like an Adam something today. Returned the call, but it went to a. What well, sounded like a vendor supply um, company, so I didn't leave a message. But so when did he call special? It was this afternoon. Maybe there was a different issue. Yeah, possibly. Maybe it's not the same thing. All right. What do you have a number for this, Adam? Mark? Yes. So why don't we? Uh, why don't you hand that to me, and then I'll give you one. The other guard well, wasn't on the middle of it, right? This one you said was the, the middle middle road. Yeah, this would be on the middle road. Yeah. Okay. So I'll give him a Please call or if yeah. either one of us can I'll I'll do that and follow up with you on that to find out what that is. That's it. I don't know of any other issue. Did you think it was gonna be replaced? Maybe it's just miscommunication. Maybe, yeah. Maybe we don't need to replace it. No, I think we talked about that last fall. Yeah. I bet that's it. Yeah, I bet he's just under <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, let's see if we have any hands. I don't think we do. Can I point out that Martin and the guys have been doing a tremendous job up in my house? Yeah. Up to your house. <laughs> <laughs> our, 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 class, our class three road. <laughs> It serves, it serves five, five or six families, so. Taxpayers. <laughs> Big taxpayers. Good. Yeah. Well, good. And were you doing some ditch up there, Martin? Yeah, we had a small washout that we uh, started with, but yeah, we're a bit with some ditching and uh, uh, stone mining. We will be doing some stone mining in the ditches there. It's uh, part of the MRGP. It's hydrologically connected, so it'll be... Mm -hmm. A lot of it will be reimbursed work, so that's good. Just, by the way, um, how's your new track workout? 
Uh, it's still sitting in Iroquois, but we should have it. <laughs> so, it hasn't broke down. <laughs> mileage is good. Yeah, it's a very low mileage here. Yeah. All, right. All right, so um, why don't we go ahead and I guess because it's on, uh, I know we have Jim here. Is Jeff coming as well? Jeff unfortunately could not make it. His son has, is in the honors. Uh, oh, since that time of year for that. It is. It was that's, like on plan now. He found out Friday. So. That's, um, you guys want to move ahead with this or are you expecting? Uh, I know both Stefan and Sean were planning on making it. Okay. And Sharon. And Sharon. And Sharon. All right. So we'll lead off on that because that is something. Um, Do we have, you know what, might be a good time to take a look at the, ch uh, the chain okay. piece. Yeah. Um, because we need to do that and that uh, bring us up to about that time. So that, that's something we need to go into executive yeah. session uh, to do. So I move um, to go into executive session four. John, can you give me the reason? So uh, this would be. Confidential attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal, legal services to the body. All right. And then, so I'd ask uh, Cheryl and Sasha to, to stay as well. Um, from the, um, he's a supervisor for loss control for VLCT. Um, so uh, here tonight to discuss the federal CDL regulation departments and I know you were in town a week or a week and a half ago. Yeah. But I appreciate you accommodating us and giving hard and hard to get out during the day to get these meetings in. So thanks for coming and uh, I know Cheryl Cheryl Lynn has joined us as well. We've got uh, most of our people with the guys. So uh, why don't you go ahead Jim and enlighten us and Yeah so I guess you know we had uh, diverse discussion about all of the federal health care safety administration regulations around record keeping. Um, and I think the one thing that we um, had the most discussion on was the annual inquiry and review of driving records for commercial motor vehicle operators. Um, and so I don't know where, how you'd like me to if there's questions. Yeah, can you, is yeah, that something you. that we haven't um, done here? So it would be new yeah. for, for us. And so my question would be why? Um, yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. I've got a whole bunch of them, guys. And then we can go from there. Oh, I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there, so there, there are a whole bunch of record keeping requirements for driver qualification files. Um, and so 391.25, the annual inquiry and review of driving record requires that the employer determine whether the driver meets the minimum requirements for safe driving or is disqualified from driving a motor vehicle annually. Um, while this is a, it's a federal motor carrier regulation, it's also a safety best practice for fleet operations. Um, because number one, doing the motor vehicle record checks, you're verifying as the employer that they have a, a valid license. And number two, as an employer, you're validating that they're actually eligible and qualified to drive under federal motor carrier rules. Um, which means that they don't have any kind of outstanding or excessive violations or citations. Um, and so the, here, I have another list that I'm going to pass out. These are the, these are the ongoing record keeping requirements. Um, so, um, so in addition to the annual motor vehicle record checks, um, someone should be re reviewing that annual record check and, and certifying that they've reviewed it and there's nothing wrong with that record. Drivers are also supposed to self-certify that they had no 
violations, or if they had violations, they need to self-certify annually um, what those were uh, before the motor vehicle record checks get run. So it's kind of a double check. It's allowing the employee to um, provide a response and in, uh, before you actually get the, the verification from the Department of Motor Vehicles. And this is in addition to all the drug and alcohol testing that they do. So under this, um, we would pull the DMV report mm -hmm. and then someone in our office would go over it to review, review, it. review it to be sure that you know, they're it's not suspended or not, whatever. Right. It be. And so I, I, there are a couple instances just recently um, in a couple of municipalities where there was um, the first one, the driver, um, they actually sus suspected he was under the influence of drugs or alcohol and they did a reasonable suspicion test on him and that came back positive for drugs. So they suspended him. While he was on suspended duty, he was working for somebody else. DMV pulled him over, found out he had a suspended license went back to this town and asked them if they knew if he had a suspended license while he was working for them, and they had no clue. Mm -hmm. So that can happen. So there was another town just recently, uh, within the last four months, that had a visit from Federal Motor Carrier. The driver um, had not had a positive drug test was not in the process of doing follow-ups and return to duties or counseling. They also found his license was suspended. So it can happen. They could be the best driver. They could be the best employee. But if it means losing your job, you're going to hide that. And it's a huge liability for the municipality to have somebody operating one of your vehicles without a license. Question. Yeah. If you've checked within the past 12 months and it was good, mm -hmm. is, are, are you no longer liable? You're still going to be, you're going to have some liability, probably not as much liability, as long as you're doing that proactive check based on, you know, following the federal regulation. There's always liability. It's how you control that and limit it. Mm -hmm. How long is this requirement been in place? 1972. Okay. And, and so one of the ex one of the exceptions where it says under subpart G, any employees hired prior to 1971 is one of the exceptions. So we understand as um, as lost control folks who work with municipalities that this is one of many duties of the town clerk or the town administrator and it's such a small piece of what they do that um, it can sometimes um, go unnoticed that it's not actually being done and so we wanted to bring this to light um, and we've been doing a pretty good job for the last i'd say five or six years creating these checklists we have two checklists one for pre-employment one for ongoing record keeping. We have all the documentation that you need to do it. And we've been notifying and pushing out that information to the town administrators, town clerks, whoever's in charge of kind of the drug and alcohol testing program or the federal motor carrier rules. Um, and then providing guidance like we're doing here today. Again, it's, it's uh, all in an effort to um, manage your risk, make sure that your drivers are safe and off, you know, on the road, um, mm -hmm. legal. It's, it's one of those things where you can take, you know, it, um, I guess the principle of, all right, you're going to check on me and, and such, but to be very honest with you guys, I, I drive a company car and they, I get it done to me on a yearly basis. It's not that big a deal until actually this morning I got an email from them from the fleet company saying my license was expired. And uh, yeah, yeah. And it was. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> um, the license, 
2020, but it was, you know, it was a mistake. I went to DMV and they were, you know, fixed it very quickly. And it was just, you know, my fleet does a, another um, check. I have to give the permission to check actually each time. Um, yes. So I don't think it's a, I understand where it feels it's like. Not, it's not, I won't speak for anybody else. Where I have the issue with is uh, you have the right to know, especially, you know, even the year of the check, that's fine. I could leave here tonight in my personal rig get a motor violation, and I have to report to you, even though it does not impact my license at all. I still have my drive plus, I won't lose my license. I have to report to you that I got a ticket in my personal rig. And yeah. furthermore, in, the, in the, the way that the stuff is written, it also says that we can be disciplined for getting a ticket in our personal rig even if it doesn't affect our license at work or our job. Or our job. Mm -hmm. Even if it is outside of work in our personal vehicle, it doesn't affect our license at work. Mm -hmm. And this is part of your CDL training, and you're told this and tested on that? No. We no, no, we, we weren't aware of this until it came about huh. here. Well, that doesn't seem first time I've ever heard of it. First time, I went recently at a municipal show. Mm -hmm. 11 other towns that I spoke to, 10 of them had absolutely no idea what I was talking about. The 11th one knew about it, but was not doing it. So yeah, This is a law that's been around since 1971 or 72. So would it make more sense for people with CDL licenses to report their employment to DMV and have DMV send this out? Don't have an issue with the with the DMV check at all. Yearly check makes perfect sense. What I have an issue with is self-reporting on myself if I get a speeding ticket in my personal rig. Yeah, I so think what does that make any sense? Anybody in this room? I, my, I think what I'd like to see is, is that annual check to done. Make sure you still have your CDL license. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Not that. Uh, you know. Absolutely. Other than that, I don't really but care. The, the town might be what is going on with them. I with this law, that. though. So, look at section B2. Um, so, mm -hmm. so if, if someone, there are a whole bunch of disqualifying events, um, and that's there's actually a document um, that we provided to the town. It's a disqualification chart. And um, those disqualifiers are, are really above and beyond something that's just like a minor mm -hmm. speeding violation. If I was doing 10 miles over the speed limit, got pulled over, um, that's nothing that, that an employer of commercial motor vehicle operators um, would really care about unless there was excessive, you know, it, it was a repetitive um, event. So, you but know, you're still required to be reportable. Even, even if it just, even, even if it's it kind of a matter of not your report, whether you're concerned about it, we still have to report. <clears throat> Correct. I thought that was only 15 miles. Yeah, 15. So there was 15, 15 miles, miles over the speed limit. Yeah, 15 miles or 15 miles. Yeah. Yeah. Let's read through it. So still be required to report. <laughs> I must admit, I, that's not something we're not self required to report. No, no, no. Because no. 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 you're not a commercial motor vehicle operator. So, commercial motor vehicle operators are held at a higher standard than personal vehicle operators, right? Um, oh, is, commercial. is it a. So, commercial motor vehicle is. is defined as a vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating of 26,001 pounds or more. Okay, then that one up. So these guys are commercial motor vehicle operators. They have a special license to drive yeah. vehicles. Yeah. Um, and so they're held at a higher standard by the federal government for doing this job. Um, and so some of the disqualifiers, let me tell you, so under, you know, being under the influence of drugs and alcohol, so if you get a DUI and notify your employer, um, if you, those are all drug and alcohol, uh, using the vehicle to commit a felony, so hopefully you're not doing that. Um, let's go to the 
speeding excessively involving any speed 15 miles or more above the speed limit, whether in your personal rig or in your commercial motor vehicle. Driving recklessly is defined by the state or local law or regulation, um, including offenses of driving a motor vehicle in willful or wanton disregard for the safety of persons or property, making improper or erratic traffic lane changes, following the vehicle too closely ahead of you, violating the state or local law related to motor vehicle traffic control. Does any of that sound like it could be up to the discretion of the officer pulling you over? So um, we have that information, but we don't have to do anything with that information once we get it, though, right? It says the employer must consider the driver's accident record. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. And mm -hmm. any evidence that the drivers violated the laws governing the oper operation of vehicles must give great weight to violations such as speeding, reckless driving, and operating while under the influence of drugs or alcohol that indicate that the driver has exhibited a disregard for the safety of the public. And so you have to, to get the motor vehicle record, you get a sign off from these guys, um, they had no violations or they had violations. You review it all and you make a decision of whether that operator is a safe operator and should be behind a vehicle of that size. So it's just, it's good risk management practice um, overall. Um, because if something bad was to happen, that, that operator's record is actually, is going to be brought into that lawsuit. So, um, and they're gonna wanna know well, how, why the town let that person continue to operate that vehicle. Um, but if one person so, gets one speeding ticket. It's not gonna be a big deal, no. I mean, I haven't had a speeding, I'm going to knock on wood, I haven't had a speeding ticket, you know, you know since I was 17 years old. Because um, I feel like I'm a big drunk, you know, take it seriously. I think something's been said about if we don't have anything to hide, we'd have no issues. I have nothing on my license going back for 8 to 10 mm -hmm. years. I mean, I don't know when the last speeding ticket I have. got nothing on my license, it's not about that, not at all. All right, well, I think, um, any other questions for, um, for uh, Jim? Mm -hmm. Sherilyn, I know you have been involved in this. Do you want to add anything or anything to comment this evening? No, we've all discussed it prior to this as well, so okay. it's just a matter of what's going to happen going forward. All right, just, guys, put mm -hmm. Martin, you guys have a right. um, do you get large towns for no you know, for municipalities or any government agency mm -hmm. they do not have to pay a fee for these vehicle record checks. All right, well we'll move to um we'll get all this information and we'll have to come up with uh, some type of policy. Um, or, or or not. But we need to discuss it. I don't uh, think we need to uh, mesh that out tonight. But uh, we need to start getting this uh, taken care of one way or another. But I appreciate you taking the time to come in, Jim. Yeah. It's good to get the information straight from you. Um, Actually, I, I had a thought. Does anyone mind if we requested that DMV record in the meanwhile as we're formulating the policy? Because then we're. Then we're Covered from the liability. There's no Can issue with that. Really I don't have no know. issue with the yearly check. Okay. So can we go ahead and do that yearly check? Yeah, that's ending up to us. We can go ahead and do that. Right. Uh, right. Right. But, but I'm just saying, can we ask our office staff to do that? It's a good idea. Okay. Thank you. And Sherman, is that something that um, yes. you, can, you can I do? have, but I'll let you know. All right. So why don't we uh, go ahead and start there, and um, we move in there. That's all right. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Next suggestion. Next suggestion. Does that work for everyone, sir? Sounds good to me. All right. Right. Uh, Thank you. Might need to check with Robin.
So do you have to, they have to sign off on something? Yeah, it's it. actually this form right here. So if you, if you have it, you want to give these guys, you guys can take it home with you or sign yeah. tonight, whatever you want to do. Thank you. So how's everything going on? Uh, so your um, spouse is not going to be here tonight? No. Yeah. You're like, where is she? <laughs> All right. Um, Paper. All right, so let's go ahead and we're all set. We want to uh, some of the other things. Can we approve the minutes for 415 and 520? Uh, I'm going to approve the minutes of uh, April 15th and April 9th. Any uh, discussion on those minutes? All fair, but I, 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 thank you. Um, any old business? Is this where you want me to um, pick up the Act 46? Yes. Um, I've been reading over the Act 46 that happened in 2016, June 7th vote, mm -hmm. whereas uh, Moortown Elementary School would join the HUUSD Union. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, there's been some discussion about that they couldn't close Morton Elementary School without a vote of the people. Um, that's not actually the fact. The fact is that they're doing studies right now. Um, Ray Dagle was in the other day. And he's doing studies of every school as to the capacity for growth, the capacity for parking, how much land there is, you know, is there room to expand or go up. Um, so those studies of every school are being done right now. And there can be no consolidation for four years, which would be 2020. And then beginning 2021, it only takes the majority of the school directors to close the school <clears throat> after public notice. So I just wanted you to keep that in mind, um, that there is not a town vote. It's a vote of the school, of the HUUSD school board to close the school. Mm -hmm. Now the town has the first option to buy the school and the lands that were turned over to HUUSD with the merger. But you also incur all of the debt, the current debt that what they would have at the time. So if there's you know, the new roof, well, I, I forgot, I read how much the debt was, but anything that's done between now and then to the school to for mm -hmm. um, payments or what the town would incur those payments. If the town did not buy the property back for a dollar, then the school can sell the property. The union can they, sell the property. They can sell the property. All the holdings, the land, everything with that vote was turned over to Harlan Union. Mm -hmm. Can you buy it and run a school? Pardon me? Can you buy it and run a school? <laughs> if you want all the debt, how many million dollars worth of debt? So what about, just for you, um, if you decide you, you want to withdraw from the district, can that happen as well? I think you can. Um, that would be a, a question for Ron Shems, but I think you can. Um, but I think they've got it sewed up pretty well, so that if you, you would still incur the debt with the school. Right, well, mm -hmm. I mean, that would be expected. I mean, it's your, mm -hmm. I mean, we had that debt and we gave it away. I mean, right. Yeah. You know, if it came back to us, I'd expect that we would. But that would be kind of the same thing if um, if they closed the school, you could buy it back for a dollar. It would be kind of the same thing as removing from the union. Right. You know, at that time, I think. I mean, without going through all the legal. Right, but it might. I mean, I think that's certainly something that that question should be asked at some point. 
So the, the union would not have to vote. I thought, I was under the impression that, that they would have to vote to allow the uh, municipality. For the town? Yeah. No, the town. It's just a so if we wanted if, if if we wanted to withdraw from the union, oh yeah, you, the town would have to vote to withdraw. The town would have to vote, yeah. but but the the union, HBO, itself. The union itself, the union school board, would not have to right. vote to allow it. Okay, because that was that was the impression that. Right. The, I don't you know, think the union has to allow us to leave. Yeah, that's, a, that's what I thought. Yeah. They would have to allow you to leave after after we had a town vote. After the town had a vote, then it would go to the district for another vote? Hmm. Is that how it would go? I'm not sure. I think I'm not sure about that. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, a, that's a legal question for Ron Shems. He's been studying it. Or Peter Langella. Are you guys considering doing this? Only one town from the district? No, I think it's just a question. I think it's too early for that. Like really. to, I think at this point it's too early to even consider that. Yeah, I, I um, agree. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely no. I, mean, yeah. I think that question needs to be asked. What are the po what are the possibilities? Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, you just start early looking at it, yeah. so you're not surprised. Uh -huh. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Just a thought. So, any other thing? I'm not sure. Um, no, other than if you're going to um, have a committee or someone to look into some of this stuff. I think um, Peter Mangella might be interested in. All right. Uh, All right, let's. Uh, let's just start going around, so we'll keep it on the agenda. Yeah, I'll keep on the whole business. Now, also, originally, I thought that there were going to be meetings held within each town. It sounds like that's not the case. That anymore. will be happening. It's a public meeting for hear public comment. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The wording. This is the contract. Um, prior to holding a vote on whether to close the school, the board shall hold at least three public hearings regarding the proposed school closure. At least one of the public hearings shall be held in the community in which the school is located. If after conducting public hearings, the Board of Directors intends to vote on whether to close the school, it shall give public notice of its intent to vote to close the school. Stating the reason for the closure at least 10 days prior to the school board's vote. Okay. Actually, my question was in terms of an, an informational meeting on you know the, the procedure and and also the, the vote, the upcoming vote that they're shooting for 2020. Well there's been a okay. bunch. No, there's been a bunch, but I thought that there was going to be one specific for the town of Moortown. Yes, yes. I just at least one public hearing shall be held in the community in which the school is located. Okay. So there will be a public hearing in Moortown. If after that hearing they still decide to close the school, they'll put that out in a notice 10 days before they vote and the reasons why. Okay. So there'll be three public hearings at Harwood and one public hearing in Moortown. That's it. We go down that route. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah. Um, Sasha or Cheryl, can you give an update on the sidewalk and the construction phase? Okay. So we have a chart. Do any of you have any questions on? <clears throat> the bids are going out. The bid documents are nearly ready um, to go out. <laughs> With the intent that construction start in September to get all the right of way work done that will happen through November. Um, the state's going to pay in 2020. They're going to pay 100 b And then this project will be finished up 
um, you know, the gardening or whatever that does not involve the new pavement in 2020. Um, Doug Henson said today that um, the bid documents are nearly ready to go out. And so how are we going to send those out? Are put them on uh, like map works and things like that? Or what do we do with those to make sure that they're seen by a number of people? They will go to uh, blueprints. Blueprints. Works in progress. Yeah, progress, 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 progress. Yeah. Blueprints will be available at blueprints, etc. I believe. Yes. Um, Doug Henson will um, hold a site visit. He, he'll prepare the bids. He'll hold a site visit for contractors. He will handle any addendums to the contract, making sure that all those who attend the site visit will be a mandatory site visit, uh, making sure that all of the, um, the bidders who attended the site visit have the same addendum, contract addendum. addendum. Then once all the bids are here, he'll bring the bids into the board, explain everything, and so you will have the choice of contractors. When um, should we be hiring a, an on-site person? It almost would seem like you don't want to get up front, right? Uh, on-site person, we have Pat Travers. He's the local project manager. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. And so he's he'll involved be in this? He'll be running it. Um, he'll need a contact person, I'm sure, from the town to make any decision or whatever. Um, Sharon will be working closely with um, Chris Hunt on reimbursements, questions, anything. He's her go-to person. Um, if the bids come in over, we'll, she'll contact Chris Hunt and we'll have to do an addendum um, for more money on that. Um, it's not our fault that the project has been held up. It was VTrans. Um, no, there's been a lot to it, but it's mm -hmm. nice that it's finally going out the door. It'll be fine. <coughs> it will be fine. So I know this afternoon we spoke this morning. Um, you were talking about the meeting or discussing the other side of the road. Did that? Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Okay. So you meet with John Kaplan, right? Yeah, we meet at 9 30. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you, and that's the, the yeah. sidewalk on the other side. Yeah, he's coming in to go over the grant that was denied last year to try to freshen it up and hopefully get it to go through so we can get the other side done. We want to know why they turned the grant down. He's the one. Good. And we'll, <coughs> we'll fix what he wanted before. He wants you to do the first side first. Yeah, <laughs> that was my guess. Show us you can get one no, Well, actually, now we have, um, we were using a cost estimate from Dubois and King from when they did the project back in 2010. We now have cost estimates from the state that the state uses, so we can prepare oh, a new. Um, cost estimate sheet with the current prices and everything. And my feeling is that that's where we flunked the first time around, that they were afraid that the cost estimates weren't correct. So this time we'll have all up to date state figures. All right, it's there. there. So it's, all right. Well, good. Um, we'll definitely have a celebration when this thing hits the ground. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, another old business I have. Uh, for the board, I, I spoke with Cheryl earlier this week, and it was my feeling. Um, and I think Sasha's doing a great job. Cheryl is picking up um, the grant stuff and everything you're doing. But I think it would be um, advantageous to have Cheryl work five hours a week um, after her first month, after she's off for a month, come back, work five hours a week until the end of the year. Um, basically, as a audit what's going on in the office, make sure the grants um, are being taken care of. And I know, again, it's nothing on anyone, but just to make sure there's another set of eyes, because uh, it is such an important thing that we do here. Um, and also to help Sasha through, you know, um, more training. Um, and for five hours a week would, would give you that. A week or a month, you said? A week. So every week, pick a day, Tuesday or Wednesday, come in for five hours. Um, I've got, I mean, we've got the money and the budget to do it. And it would just be a 
feel safe to have that that uh, third set of eyes or something to make sure that the transition is as smooth as uh, it needs to be. Can I speak? Sure. <laughs> I think that that would be a good idea as well because this has only been going on for less than a month now. Mm -hmm. I mean, to fill her shoes and you know, yeah. I, no, I agree. I would, That's why I, would, I, would, I, would, I think you guys are doing a good job, but just mm -hmm. looking from the outside and just taking, we've got a, 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 you know, a resource here because we're going to have enough questions. You know, I can say just, all right, what do you do? How do you do this? And uh, if we just had a couple, I wouldn't mind asking her, but um, we're going to have enough, so I feel that we should have her in. Um, work that for the end of the year and then we'll, we'll reevaluate it. Um, how many months do you think you need for that? Is to the end of the year, right? Do you need half? Do you need double? What's... It's hard to know. Um, at this point right now, if we get another sidewalk grant, if we get the grant to do um, to do the parking lot, the construction part of it. We've got like four grants going right now, and it's a lot mm -hmm. for a person to learn and to, and she can do it, but it's a lot, and it would be a lot easier to have some. Because in the same time, we want to continue doing those grants, but it will continue to be looking for other stuff. Yeah, yeah there's three more grants that just came out. Right, it can't let the well go dry, and that's, what can happen in these things, so you get a constant, and then, and again, I think Sasha's doing a great job, but, you know, um, there needs, you know, as you said, there's a lot of, a lot of things that, to do, um, and we're probably not the best trainers here, so, um, no, I think it's, so you guys have, um, yeah, I'm yeah that's, that's fine, that's a great idea. All right. Besides, so after a month, Cheryl's going to be bored out of her mind anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How does that relate to the extent and for being? It's not going to affect it at all. Again, it's not here to do the work. It's here to, to audit what's going on, to do some of the work, to train Sasa. Um, so it's just another five hours a week that I experience is needed. And the other thing that, you know, we were talking about the other day, too, is we're losing 32 hours a week with her. We had Katrina for 15 hours a week. We are, we are taking off from the budget, if she mm -hmm. wasn't even working, 42 hours a week. Mm -hmm. That's a huge... And you're doing it in half the time. Right. Yeah. So no, we're asking a lot, you know, and it's recognized. It's just a matter of... Yeah. No magic. It's it's just, yeah, it's just a conversion and getting, you know, she can lay her hand on something in a second where we're right. going to be looking for it for a half an hour because we don't know where, you know, it's, just, it's little things and we, she has so much in her head that none of us know. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I'm okay with it. I have a request, which is that you really concentrate on knowledge transfer. Because it would be so easy to pick things up and make them happen. And it wouldn't, that wouldn't be what you're here for. You'd think you knew me. <laughs> she, she won't do it for him. <laughs> no, I've learned. Um, yeah. I, I've been pretty much doing that since the decision was made. I mean, look at what Sasha's doing tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here if she has trouble, you know, or anything to add. But Sasha's taking the role. Sharon is taking the role of getting the money back in grants, but there's questions and there's procedures that you have to follow per state regulations on how to get the money back. Yeah. No, I'm not doing it. I'm just kind of, mm -hmm. I haven't been doing it, have I? No, she has not. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been there. And the questions, there are questions. It's more of a guidance chase, mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't like mm -hmm. I don't want her doing the job either. It's mm -hmm. like we want to be able to step off, you know, come January. Uh, but you know, until then, let's make sure everyone's up to speed uh, and doing what they 
you know, you got a great resource that you'll enjoy it. And she's made it very clear that she'll take phone calls from us. <laughs> well, yeah, well, she'll change your number. <laughs> everyone says that at first. <laughs> So good. The other thing on old business I want to discuss, and actually while you gentlemen are here, um, is we had talked about um, your compensation, you know, in, the, in January, February, or something at that point. Um, so I'd like to commit within the next month, we will set some time together as a board. Um, John and I will work with, I think, Martin here for, at first. Um, to look at that, but get that done in the next month. And what we're also going to include um, Sasha as well, I don't know if you guys, but um, as well to evaluate as we said with the word. So that's in the, uh, that is uh, something we're following through with and we'll follow through with and get that done uh, this month. Uh, not in June, but to the end of July. How's that? Because I got some traveling and uh, it's in but we'll get that to you too. I think that's all I have. Um, we have some signings we have to do. Um, I think there's one more old business, the tax maps. Who's this doing? Yeah. Thank you guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. See you later. Thank you very much. Um, we still have a lot of issues with the tax maps, and yes, we're going to lose a little bit of clerk revenue because when, the minute somebody walks through the door and they walk out of here, they get charged for their time and their um, copies. But I don't think that by putting the tax maps on the internet, we're going to lose enough to worry about. Um, mm -hmm. It's also just passing the state where they're, they're going to be changing the um, recording fee, so we'll be making up for some of that loss there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be beneficial to our taxpayers to see these. Some people don't even know that there's errors because they haven't seen them. Um, we're, still, we're still correcting them on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. so, I was hoping you would be in favor of this. I am. I mean, yeah, we're going to lose mm -hmm. a little bit of revenue, mm -hmm. but knowing that a little bit more is going to be changing in another area, I think it will make up for it. I think our data is going to get a lot better. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. yeah. But so I would support putting the tax maps on. I would not support putting anything else on. But mm -hmm. the tax maps I would definitely support. All right. When, is that something that we were um, going to do this fall? Honestly, I, I almost think it's, it's a matter of just talking to CAI because like I already have them electronically mm -hmm. so if it's a matter of just sending them to JB and putting them on but honestly they come out on a piece of paper this size so say tax map 5 could have 100 or plus or less parcels on it so some of them are really hard to see so they would have to copy it and then blow it up and see it but they could at least get a gist of it and then if they got a question come in and look at the big maps. Sasha, so can we look into that and see what the process and mm -hmm. how that would work? Yeah, I'd like to know what the options are for formats. So that would be better. Yeah. Have you ever looked at the Warren website? I've never. I don't know. It, it was a while ago that I mm -hmm. looked, but you could click on a certain area mm -hmm. and then you'd get all kinds of information. I don't know how in depth that would be, but right. probably be like a whole computer program that mm -hmm. can cost a lot. Right. But well, are we ready to agree to pay for adding dimensions? Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping all that could be put up. Those are not on there yet. That's, that's probably going to be a little bit. Yeah, no, not yeah. right away. But yeah. That would be yeah. something. Because I think once people see the map with dimensions on it is when they'll start correcting things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there any other? I know on our business we also have uh, personal policy revisions. Is that? Do I don't it? have it out here. I was going to do it next time. Okay, good. Because there was so much on for right. point. If there's any big things, can you just send those forward to people prior to the meeting? Sure. Mm -hmm. It's still all VLC changes? Yes. Okay. Suggested changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, so that, we just have a few things here aside. 
Can I start with me? I think so. Thank you, Cheryl. You're Thank you, Cheryl. Lynn. All right. Um, we have our annual agreement with the uh, Central Vermont Humane Society. Uh, here's the renewal contract for the Cardiographic um, Associates plus the yeah, kind of <laughs> All right. What is this here? 